Today on Eagle Nation News, new to UIL but used to winning, water polo is now a UIL sport. Madeline Wentz takes a dive into the new PHS team. It's time to get in the spirit because there are new spirit leaders at PHS. Allison Wood meets the students leading the chance. PGA of America recently relocated to Frisco. Grace Escobel takes an exclusive look inside the new headquarters. All this and more today on ENN. Good morning, Eagle Nation, and thank you for joining us. Today is Friday, September 9th. I'm Diane Shaw. And I'm Parker Reynolds. Today marks the beginning of the Dallas Chocolate Festival. The event is an immersive experience, allowing local chocolate connoisseurs to taste the best chocolate Dallas has to offer. If tasting isn't enough, event goers can join workshops like Bean to Bar or Chocolate and Tea Pairings. And beyond workshops, classes on how to make chocolate will be offered. All of this and more is taking place this weekend at Fig Downtown. You know, Diana, I love chocolate, so I might have to check that out. Me too. Maybe we'll be there tomorrow morning. The United Kingdom is in mourning today following the death of the longest reigning English monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. In her 70 years as queen, Queen Elizabeth paved the way for future female world leaders, as she was known for her love of country and has been the most well-liked monarch in English history. In 1952, Elizabeth became queen at age 25 following the death of her father. The United Kingdom has now entered the 12 days of mourning where they will celebrate and remember the Queen's legacy. The Queen's first son, Charles, is now the King of England and will take over for her royal duties. The Queen was 96. Queen Elizabeth was a paradigm of strength for women around the world. She really showed what women could do in a position of power. But while Operation London Bridge may have fallen down, the Prosper Bridge is now open. Landry Long has more live. Thanks, Diane. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the newly opened Frontier Parkway Bridge. The bridge opened yesterday and stretches all the way from Prosper High School to Children's Health Stadium. The bridge is going to make transportation much easier for Prosper High School students and Prosper residents as a whole as they make daily commutes. The bridge is open to two lanes currently, but in the coming months will be four full lanes. For me personally, this is going to make going to school a lot easier, and I think that they timed this perfectly with the first Prosper Eagle home game coming up. Reporting for Eagle Nation News, I'm Landry Long. Back to you, Diane. The University Interscholastic League is including water polo in its athletic lineup for the very first time this school year. Madeline Wentz highlights Prosper's water polo team as they enter their competitive season. Water polo district play has just begun, and the boys and girls teams at PHS hope to make waves this season. They are already off to a great start, having performed well in preseason tournament play, and they plan to carry that momentum into the regular season. Keeping a good like mentality, waking up, going to practice, and giving it your all each and every day, like that's what's going to get you through like a good competitive season. This is the first year that water polo is recognized as a UIL sport, increasing the stakes and providing more opportunities for students. Coach Keenan Fogelberg aims to help navigate his players towards a successful UIL debut. This is a brand new sport for most of these kids, so they need to be building skills, not necessarily honing skills that they've been building since they were 10. So practice is crucial for them to build up that endurance and also build a basic set of skills in order to then build throughout the season. Water polo is a team sport in which players work together to score all while treading water. It requires an incredible amount of endurance, focus, and teamwork to win. If you're not close with your team, you're not going to have a good team dynamic and it's not going to flow very well. The closer you are to your team, one, the more fun you're going to have in games, and two, the more you know their playing style. Collaborative skills and UIL merit aren't the only things to be gained from Prosper Water Polo. Fogelberg aims to inspire positive change in his players' lives through his coaching. So my goal is to help these kids be the best version of themselves. Definitely would say that I've learned trust, patience, um, encouragement, and helping others. Prosper Water Polo as a whole is hopeful that their determination, teamwork, and discipline will pay off this season. So our team is extremely disciplined and has a ton of talent. I think there's a great recipe for success. The boys and girls teams battle Denton Ryan tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. in the Denton ISD Natatorium. I'm Madeline Wentz, reporting for Eagle Nation News. Both the girls and boys are undefeated in district play so far. May they have the best of luck in maintaining that streak tomorrow. And with it being a new UIL sport, it's so exciting to see what might happen for the rest of the season. After this short break, Zach Manning has everything entertainment in this week's Talent Talk.
You are invited to join students from PHS on two incredible trips to Asia in the summer of 2023 and in Europe in the summer of 2024. Whether you prefer exploring ancient castles, climbing the Swiss Alps, or playing with elephants, there will be something for you. There will be an informational meeting on Tuesday, September 13th in Mr. Logan's room for additional information. There's always something interesting going on in the world of entertainment. Zach Manning is in studio with this week's edition of Talent Talk. Thanks, Parker. Starting with the big hits, this last Saturday, The weekend had to cancel and sold out uh, on his Los Angeles concert after losing his voice during the third song. He was reportedly performing Can't Feel My Face when he walked off stage. Fans were packed in this 70,000 seat arena. The weekend later tweeted, My voice went out during the first song and I'm devastated. Felt it go and my heart dropped. My deepest apologies to my fans here. I promise I'll make it up to y'all with a new date. In TV news, Norman Reedus, who plays Daryl Dixon in AMC's The Walking Dead, suffered a head injury back in March on the set. After Reedus was able to return back to work, he claimed that the aftermath of the injury really frightened him, making him believe he was going to die. Reedus told Entertainment News, quote, I had a neurologist, I failed the light test, I had a security guard in my driveway just in case, and I was holding onto walls walking throughout the rooms. It was nuts. Luckily for fans and Reedus, he did make a swift recovery and will premiere in the second half of Walking Dead's 11th and final season. In case you didn't know, we do have a USA Pep Rally this afternoon. Allison Wood takes a closer look at how this year's spirit leaders are creating a better Pep Rally experience for the student body. With the new school year comes new spirit leaders, and this year's spirit leaders are determined to increase student excitement about pep rallies. While many PISD alumni reminisce about the golden days of pep rallies, this year's spirit leaders are set on restoring pep rallies to their former glory. I want to be a spirit leader because I remember when I was little, like 6th and 7th grade, being checked out of school to come to the pep rallies here and just the memories I have there, seeing that it wasn't what it used to be and I figured that I wanted to you know, do my best to try to be a part to bring it back. These new spirit leaders have one main goal for pep rallies, student involvement. Through student involvement, spirit leaders plan to raise school spirit and make students more excited about attending Prosper High School. I think the biggest thing for getting students more involved in pep rallies is, I mean, A, having good enough pep rallies that makes them interested in it, and B, I think it, the whole idea of pep rally is to bring this whole idea that students are almost proud of where they go to school. We cheer on our teams, we show up to games, and Pepper is a great way to advertise those games and um, get that spirit up. With this plan to bring back school spirit, spirit leaders hope to get students excited about Pep Rallies the moment they walk into the arena door. The most exciting part of Pep Rallies would have to be right at the start when everyone's coming in and the stands are starting to get filled up and the band's going. Those are always cool moments. The spirit leaders are determined to create a legacy for PHS, starting with our Pep Rallies. I'm Allison Wood, reporting for Eagle Nation News. I, for one, can't wait to see what the spirit leaders have planned for the next pep rally. Stay tuned. Everything Prosper Sports, up next, in game time. Are you a fantastic speller? Do you have a knack for writing essays? Do you love analyzing text? Then one of these events might be for you. There will be a UIL academic team spelling literary criticism and ready writing informational meeting next Thursday in room 1234. Prosper Sports continue to dominate. Grace Esquivel is in studio with this week's Game Time. Thanks, Diane. Last Friday, the volleyball team swept Mansfield 3-0 and continued the wins over Saxe in a 3-0 win. The Lady Eagles are currently third in the Dallas area rankings by Sports Day. The Lady Eagles will play again tonight at Denton Geyer against the Wildcats at 5.30. Switching from the court to the turf, the Eagles are officially 2-0 after a big 51-14 win over Saxe. The number 9 Eagles will go head-to-head -head with the number 7 Rockwall Yellow Jackets tonight for the first home game at Children's Health Stadium at 7. In cross-country news, the Eagles ran in the Coach T Invitational last Saturday. Senior Shawaii Johnson finished in first, while senior Jack Johnson took home fourth. The Varsity Boys Elite came in third, and the Varsity Elite Girls came in sixth. Moving on to water polo, earlier this week, the boys team secured a 21-7 win over Denton Ryan, and the girls team closed the night out with a 22-6 win over the Raiders. The Eagles will go up against Denton High at the Denton ISD Natatorium at 9 tomorrow. In tennis news, the Eagles had a dominant 19-0 win over Little Elm and are now 3-0 in district play. The Eagles will face off against Capel later today at 4.30 at Capel. 
Also taking place today, the girls golf team teed off this morning in the Texas Invitational. The tournament will continue throughout the weekend at Pecan Valley Golf, golf Course. Speaking of golf, recently PGA of America relocated to Frisco, Texas, bringing tournaments, retail, and more to North Texas. I had the opportunity to take an exclusive look inside the modern headquarters of PGA. One of the world's largest sports organizations, PGA of America, relocated their headquarters to PGA Parkway in Frisco. Formerly located in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, the 600-acre campus opened on August 22nd. It gave us the opportunity to have our team together under one roof, which we didn't have space configurations that we had in Florida were a little tighter. We didn't have the space to have everybody together. In addition to the headquarters, PGA Frisco will open a convention center, golf theme retail, a performance center, two 18-hole courses, and more. PGA Frisco, the wider campus, there's a ton of public elements to that, you know, with the two golf courses and the short course and the PGA district with the, the 70,000 square foot putting green and shops and there's going to be a lot for the public to do. The headquarters are not open to the public, but the employees will work to increase the public's love of the sport. This building is, is really a, an office building and this is where we train, you know, future golf professionals, future PGA members that come here to learn the skills required to grow the sport and to enhance people's experiences and enjoyment of the game. PGA Frisco will bring the first large-scale championship to North Texas since the 1963 PGA Championship. Just from the PGA of America side of things, there's 26 championships in 12 years. Spectator championships, member championships, uh, youth championships will all be hosted here. And as well as, you know, a place like this will attract lots of other events and competitions. Packed with history and innovation, PGA Frisco is creating a new home for golf. We're building the modern home for American golf and focus on innovation, the focus on community, um, the focus on training professionals here. The Omni PGA Frisco Resort and courses are expected to be open in spring 2023. Reporting for Eagle Nation News, I'm Grace Esquibel. The Omni PGA Frisco Resort will also have an event center that is over 100,000 square feet. You can read and see more at PGA.com. I, for one, Diana, is excited to see the opportunities that having this headquarters here brings to the area. It's definitely going to bring a lot of growth. I'm not a huge golf fan, but I know here at the school and in Prosper at Large, we have tons of huge golf fans. Yeah, for sure. But as we approach the anniversary of 9-11 on Sunday, we honor the bravery, courage, and determination of Texas men and women who assist in emergencies. On that dark day in our nation's history, we remember the victims of the terrorist attacks, as well as the brave men and women who risked their own lives to help others. While many lives were lost that day, many were saved due to the valiant efforts of first responders. That's all we have for you today, Eagle Nation. Once again, I'm Diane Shaw. And I'm Parker Reynolds. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day, and go Eagles.